I've been building robots lately based on BEAM technology. BEAM stands for Biology, Electronics, Aesthetics, and Mechanics. And it's covered in a book by Mark Tilden and Dave Renkew called Junkbots, Bugbots, and Bots on Wheels. BEAM robots are kind of interesting because they use simpler analog control circuits instead of throwing a microcontroller at a problem. Here's a little light-seeking robot I made that's described in the book. Many of the robots are based on the 74240 series of chips. These are octal inverting buffers. They have eight inverters in two different banks, one on the left side and one from the right side. And they have separate enable pins which will be put to good use in my robot. How do we use these in a robot though? Well, we can put two inverters together and if we put some capacitors and resistors into the circuit, we can make an inverter pair that will have some interesting behavior. Let's look at a graph. The RC network introduces a delay. This keeps the following stage from reacting immediately to the previous stage. When the input voltage reaches the threshold, the output changes its state. What we can do is we can loop the output of the second inverter back to the input of the first inverter. And this will basically make an oscillator. In beam technology, they call two of these inverters together a bicore, and this example here is a suspended bicore. And here's an alternate schematic. It's pretty elegant. Let's look at a graph of a simulation of a bicore. For the first inverter, here's the input. You can see what the resistor and capacitor do to the signal. And then the blue is the output. So the inverter squares up the output signal nicely. And the green line is the theoretical threshold. So that when the input in red crosses that, the output changes. The second inverter is the same situation. We have the input in red and the output in blue squared up nicely. But note that it's 180 degrees out of phase with the first inverter. So when the output of the second inverter is high, the output of the first inverter is low, and vice versa. Basically, we've made a square wave oscillator. So if we alternate the two different inverter signals and take a look at them, you can see that they're the same, but they're out of phase with each other. This is a, basically a pulse width modulation signal with a duty cycle of 50%. And we can use that to control a motor. If we connect the outputs of the two inverters to the wires of a DC motor, we can turn the motor clockwise and counterclockwise. This will be useful for making the robot. In the Junkbots book, they show how to freeform solder such a circuit. They use both the left side and the right side inverters, and the frequency of the bicore is controlled by the relationship between the resistor and the capacitor. However, I'm going to use just one chip for my whole robot control, so I want to use the left side bank of inverters for the front and back legs, and I'm going to use the right side bank of inverters a little bit later for something different. This makes the freeform soldering a little bit more complicated, but it'll look something like this. So that takes care of the front legs. How do we control the back legs? It turns out we can make another bicore and connect it to the front leg bicore with some resistors. And this back leg bicore will just mimic the front legs, but with a delay. If we analyze the gate using some tinker toys, it will look something like this. So back to the freeform circuit, we add two resistors and run the outputs of the front leg by core to the other blue inverters. 
and these will handle the back legs. Looking at a simulation of this, let's take the left front and back legs. You can see the signals are high at the same time, but they're slightly delayed. The back leg is delayed from the front legs. And this is the right side, the right foot in the front and the back. If we overlay all the signals together, it's complicated, but uh, you can see that blue and red are the front legs and green and yellow are the back legs. Here's the circuit controlling two modified servos. You can see that they're running in the same direction but with a slight delay on the motor in the back or on the right here in the video. I modified these small toy or hobby servo motors by disconnecting the pulse width modulation processing board inside. Let's take a look at it. I disconnected it from the motor. This allows me to bring two wires into the motor and control it directly, but also still make use of the gears. In the JunkBots book, they use three chips to control the whole robot. And so they have the luxury of bundling up several inverters to generate more current and drive the DC motors directly. So here they chain the second red inverter down to the inputs of the next three blue inverters and they bundle up those outputs and that generates three times the current to drive the motor. But since I'm just going to use one chip for the control circuitry, I'm going to make two simple transistor H-bridge circuits to drive the motors. This is also presented in the JunkBots book. Note that they don't have any protection diodes, but with a bi-core, you can be pretty sure only one input signal is going to be high at a time. This is what it looks like when you freeform solder one of these little six transistor H-bridge circuits. Now back to the pseudo schematic. Now we're going to add a reverser circuit and we're finally going to use that right bank of inverters. We'll add a capacitor and resistor to the right side bank inverters enable pin so that they will drop these two resistors out of the circuit when the switch is closed. This will cause the back legs to start controlling the front legs and the robot will go in reverse. So we'll tie the left side bank of inverters enable pin to ground permanently. It's always enabled. We'll also ground the two unused inputs and the chip's ground pin, and we'll put a bypass capacitor across VCC and ground to store charge for when the chip needs it. Here's how it looks when it's freeform soldered. I've also added a, some LEDs to show the process or oscillation in the circuit. I've added it to the robot body here. There's also the battery holder. Here I've added the legs. And here's the guitar string touch switch. It uses a guitar string and a crimp connector. There's also a spring on the back legs to help bring them back to center. The front legs will typically center themselves due to gravity. I've used pin sockets so that I can change resistors in and out. And here are some other tweaks that I've made. One of the first things I did was make a slow motion video of the robot walking to figure out some problems in its gait. Here I noted that the left back foot probably needs to go down vertically more so that the right front foot doesn't raise up quite so much. I also soldered in a different resistor to one side of the H-bridge to give it a little bit more power. In the book they also show how to align the feet. 
you're basically taking lines 45 degrees off of vertical and horizontal, and you want the front feet and the back feet to lie along those angled lines. At least that's just a starting point. You can experiment. I also soldered a second guitar string wire on to give it a little bit more stiffness. So here's the robot walking, sort of. The reverser circuit works, mostly. Anyway, this was kind of a fun project, and I could experiment further, but this is my beam walking robot. Thanks for watching, everybody.